Good morning, my friends. This is Brother Al Johnson. I represent according to the word of God.org, and I'm really happy to be able to say that. It's a lot of fun doing the videos, and it's a lot of fun doing the website, and uh, keeping people informed about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray in his name. Lord, we're thankful for today. We're thankful for November 8th, a brand new day in November. Uh, I'm here in Florida. It's sunny. It's beautiful, Lord. And be with all the people wherever they might be, Lord. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their families, touch their jobs, all the things that uh, people have to be concerned about every day. And Lord, let us learn from the lesson this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Tower of Babel is the subject this morning that we're going to make this video make this video on very very interesting set of events got to go back a little bit god was very upset with the world noah found grace in the eyes of the lord he built the ark nobody listened to his uh, preaching during that 120 year period of time and we know the rest of the story. Everybody died on the planet, on the, uh, on the face of the earth. Um, every man, woman, and child, every bird, uh, every animal, it's just sad. They all died. Now, when the ark landed on Mount Ariat, and God gave them explicit instructions about reproducing and replenishing the earth he specifically was talking to shem ham and japheth the sons of noah well we're going to talk about the tower of babel because the tower of babel is several generations down the line from the end of the flood the people had gathered together and they had decided that they were going to build a tower to go up into the sky, up into the heavens. And um, at the top of it, they were going to put in the zodiac. Now, all of you probably know what the zodiac is, but the zodiac represents false gods. Well, what they didn't know is that God decided to come down and check it out and that's exactly what he did they didn't know he was down there checking it out uh, but he wanted to see for himself what was going on and they were busy working they were making bricks people were making bricks some people were making mortar some people they, they were they were working hard they were going to build themselves that the huge structure just an absolute huge structure and god wasn't very happy with it so god's plan to diffuse this evil adventure was rather unique. At that particular time, everybody spoke the same language so they could all understand each other. So God decided that he was going to institute new languages so that the people couldn't understand, that, that the bricklayers couldn't understand the people providing the mortar and uh, so on and so forth. So there was new languages instituted. The people were frustrated because they couldn't understand each other and the project stopped. People were taking their minds off God and onto false gods. That's what was happening, and God wasn't happy about that. And God had made a promise he wasn't going to destroy the earth by, by water ever again, and the rainbow was, was a sign of that. So he decided to handle this a little bit differently and instituted new languages. Now, that's kind of a summary, thumbnail sketch of what's going on. Well, when you study historically some of the things that happened... There was a man at the time that the Tower of Babel was being built. His name was Nimrod. 
he was a powerful man. He controlled a great deal of what was going on on the planet Earth at the time of the Tower of Babel. He was a builder. And you know who he was? He was the son of Cush, the grandson of Ham, and the great-grandson of Noah. Now, I might have this just maybe one generation removed, but he was in Ham's line. And um, you can check that out for yourselves if you want to. I know I'll do it after I finish making this video. But he was a builder, and he was a warrior type. He was a take-charge kind of guy. He got things done, but he had one lacking thing in his life. He was not honoring God. Not the God that we love, no. I don't know if he honored any gods, but him and his family, they did not honor God the way Shem's descendants honored God and some of Japheth's. Nimrod was known for being the builder of the Tower of Babel until it was dispersed by new languages. He also built Nineveh, the capital city of Assyria. That capital city of Assyria probably held a million people. He was huge. It would take the average man in good health four days to walk around the city and the walls of Nineveh huge structure. Nimrod was responsible for that and many other structures. So he did have an impact. Now, what is this little story? The Tower of Babel, the Word of God mean to you? Why should it affect your life? Well, if we take our eyes off Jesus, we get in trouble. And today, the newspaper is not as important um, to everyday people as it used to be because of the handheld devices that we have, the iPhones and the Androids and the smartphones and so, you know what I'm talking about. But in the newspaper, there was something called the horoscopes. The horoscopes would tell you what was going to happen to you that particular day. And it was written by somebody um, who uh, did it according to the months of the year and according to the days of the month. And you could find out what your horoscope was for that day. That is, my friends, pay attention, satanic. Horoscopes are not a good thing. Ouija boards, that's not a good thing. Fortune telling, that's not a good thing. Sorcery is not a good thing. And all of that takes place in our society today. The gambling establishments of the world, they promote not only gambling, but they promote all the rest of the evil things that Satan um, puts out in front of people with lights and glitter and, oh, beautiful music makes it sound really attractive because it, he, it, he knows, Satan knows, that that will take you away from God, away from Jesus, and away from the sweet Holy Spirit. And if you're looking at that horoscope, toss that paper in the basket. That's not coming from God. That's coming from Satan. Any time... that you're being taken away from the Word of God, you know the enemy is close. And he never tires of trying to deceive you. He never tires of trying to get you in a compromising position. You see, the wonderful thing about being a born-again Christian is the Holy Spirit lives within us. He knows he can't possess us, but he can trouble us. He can try to point thoughts in our mind that will take us away from God. Don't fall for his, for his little tricks. He, he, the little things he devises every day, don't fall for that. 
That's why we have to maintain a steady diet of Almighty God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And the only way you can do that is through the Word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. We need to know the worth. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8.28, very popular scripture, very true scripture. There are many more scriptures that could be used at this time. Uh, Matthew 10. Verse 32 and 33, Jesus is speaking, Whosoever will confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father in heaven. And whosoever will deny me before men, him will I deny before my Father in heaven. Are you going to want to stand at the great white throne judgment and God will ask you the question, why should I uh, let you into heaven? Are you going to tell him, well, the horoscope said I was going to go to heaven? You don't want to do that, do you? No. That, maybe that's a bad illustration, but it definitely makes the point clear. If you're at the great white throne judgment, you have no chance. You have to make a decision in this life. In this lifetime for Jesus Christ to be on safe ground. The Tower of Babel, this was a wonderful way that God could get man straightened out by instituting new languages. Have you spoken Japanese lately? Probably not very many of you. How about Russian? Mm, no. You, 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 what kind of languages do the Eskimos have? I don't know. I don't know that. How about the Aborigine in the uh, equator? Mm. I don't know. Can't answer that. I mean, I know the basic languages. I mean, English, which my son says I never speak. I speak American and, and speak that poorly. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> no, the, the languages were a good thing. It instituted nations, laws, rules and regulations, Pay attention particularly to Genesis 9, 6. God instituted, I believe, and still does believe, in capital punishment. Oh, yeah. If you shed man's blood, by man shall your blood be shed. Read that. Pray about it. Ask yourself that. There's a lot of people that want to do away with things that are in the Bible. That's why we have so many abortions. That's why we have so much uh, um, homosexuality in our country. Boy, I tell you what, me saying those things just labels me as, wow, some kind of a, an enemy of the world today. Well, I would be proud to say, yes, I am an enemy of the world today, an enemy of the evil things in the world. I am a promoter of Jesus Christ and him crucified. I love to tell the story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And the Tower of Babel, that was a victory made by God. Learn from it, please. Let us pray. Thank you, Father God, for this time together. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your understanding. Teach us the things that we need to know, Lord, and let, let us make this a great day, the best day of our life, because we don't have yesterday, tomorrow's not here yet, so we have today, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless you.